Hello, how's it going? I've decided to go with the iPhone audio today. Keep it nice and simple. This is going to be a follow on from my past video on making a CMake project. Now in that video, if you remember, that was all done through VS Code and that's fine, but I don't really enjoy just using VS Code. I might want to use Vim or, or whatever other thing. So what I'm going to do today is drill a little bit more into actually how CMake works and I'm going to demonstrate basically command line CMake. So to start with, I'll list out my project structure. Okay, so I'll, so here's my project. Now, typically this is how I would do it. I think a lot of people do it this way. We have a project folder and then we have our source code. Maybe we've got some third party libraries. And then to describe our project, we have this CMake lists.txt. It always needs to be labeled that. But when we go ahead and run CMake, it will build a few things for us. So we have this build folder. That's where the output of CMake will go. And it produces a lot of things, but mostly these two. So we have this CMake cache. And we also have some sort of thing that we can that we can then build with something else. So um, let me see. This could be um, so so something we can use like we could use Visual Studio or Xcode or I don't know Ninja or whatever else. It's some sort of it, it the purpose of CMake is to generate some sort of project which can be built with an IDE. Now this CMake cache will speed up the process. So next time we build the project, it won't need to completely rebuild. It can take some settings from the cache, but that's the idea. So think of this thing as the output of CMake. When we run CMake, it populates this stuff and this stuff can be used by another program. So the flow, if you think of it this way, is we start with source code. And then that source code is taken in by CMake. And that is what's called the generation stage. And the purpose of that is to produce something which could be consumed by an IDE or in this case, a make file. And then this will come together and produce some sort of execution, uh, executable. And this is the compilation and linking stage. Or I guess you could say it's the build. It's the build stage. So if you, act, if you understand that, you've got most of the stuff that you'll need for CMake, whether you're using VS Code, or Vim, or Visual Studio, whatever you want. So again, I'll step through that. You edit your source code, you run CMake, CMake generates some sort of file which can be consumed, compiled, linked, whatever, and then that produces an app. Fair enough. Well, let's have a look at that in practice. All right, so here we are in our environment. Just as an example, this is one of my early, early OpenGL projects. It's just going to nothing fancy. It's just going to display a blue screen. Same process will apply with everything. So I guess you could title this video, how to not be cringe. Um, and that's, yeah, it's how to do, how to do make, see make properly. I'll stop talking. So one thing we might want is we might want to know some information about CMake. So we can just type in CMake dash dash help. And we've got all of these things. One thing super important is we have these different options. So these are various options which can be specified when we go to run CMake to generate our, our project. And the other thing is right down the bottom, our system has a list of generators. So if you look through here, we have all of these and this one here, Unix make files, that's really what I'm going to be targeting. So let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Um, 
one thing we want to do is we want to make a directory. There we go. We can see that there. Build. Um, if we go ls list storage, we can see that build is there as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and run CMake. So I want to run CMake. Then I put G to specify the generator. And the generator I'm going to use is Unix make files, even though it's the same as the default. I'm just being very explicit. Why not? And I'm also going to specify the build mode. So the thing with build modes is even though IDEs are usually very dynamic with build modes, when CMake generates a project for an IDE to consume, that can only be in one build mode. So the way we do that is with the D to define. We want to define CMake build type. And I'm going to set this to debug, but we could just as easily we could just as easily write uh, release, would be fine. Those are the options. There are other options, but there we have it. And if we were to run this right now, I'm just gonna do this as an example. So if we were to run this right now, see that we've got a warning. It says no source or binary directory provided. Both will be assumed to be the same as the current working directory. Now that's, a, that's actually okay for the source because the source is all relative to the current working directory, but it sort of hasn't worked so well, but we'll fix that up in a second. I just want to step through the generation process. So if we were to open up the CMake lists. Okay, cool. So I got that open. We can see that, that really what we're specifying as well as all of this other stuff is that we are including these uh, like OpenGL and GLFW and stuff like that. So as we can see, we look through here, we have identified the compilers we're gonna use, all of this stuff, and then right down here, found OpenGL. So that's so cool that it scans our system for us and finds it. I'm sure we know that already, but let me just pop back in. Now, the number one thing with CMake is it is totally fine. It's all right, if you make a mistake, you can just delete it. I mean, these things are meant to be deleted. So we've got make files, CMake cache, CMake install. We're going to leave that one and the make file. We're just going to delete all of this right now. Okay, so we just have what we had before. And now I'm going to go back to this. And as well as that, I'm going to specify B for binary and the binary directory is going to be build. So if we run this right now, we have exactly the same as before, just without that warning. And if we pop into build, we see that, um, yeah, we have everything that we expected. So let's go ahead and open up the CMake cache and just have a little sniff around there. Would help if we were in the build folder. Okay. There we go, right. So a little strange, there's a lot of stuff here, but basically the thing to remember is that this is setting all of the internal options, which will be used to generate the, the project in future. So we don't have to query all these system things. We can simply read them from the cache. Okay, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Close that down. Um, let's have a look at the make file. There we go. So if you've done make files before, this is pretty much a make file. It's the automated process of building, compiling and linking the whole project. Um, so sort of interesting, there's sort of a lot, but I guess, <clears throat> I guess the really interesting thing is we have this help option. So we can actually close that down and go make help. And then that will tell us, hey, these are all the things that we can make. So we can run make and then hit nothing. And then it says here the default is all. Okay, let's go ahead and go make all. So we've got that stuff. Uh, it's built it. It's built it, no problem. And we can just go execute that program and it'll probably 
Oh, no, it worked. Okay, great. There we have it. Cool. So hopefully we're feeling comfortable with CMake. The thing, I think the thing that bothered me when I was first learning CMake was that I didn't understand that CMake and Make were different things. So CMake stands for cross make. It's like cross platform make. And then after it's made it, that is then intercepted by a build process. In this case, make files. Okay, I think I've talked circularly enough. So I want to maybe step back a little bit. And if you've done any sort of terminal stuff, you know that the real power in terminals is automating everything. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this. Remember, it's fine with CMake. You can just delete stuff. Obviously, don't delete CMake lists. That's a bit of a problem. But let's go and make a shell script, which will automate this whole process. So that's build.sh. Use your editor of choice. I've been playing around with NeoVim. Um, all right, so I'll just make this one line at a time. Okay, excellent. So we're just specifying the, the shell that we're going to use to execute this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a build directory. And that's all well and good. But what I'm gonna do as well so I'm going to add this P option. And what this P option does is it basically optionally builds. So if the directory already exists, nothing happens. If the directory does not exist, it gets built and there's no errors. Okay. So we've made the directory. Now let's go ahead and build or generate. Okay, and now I'm going to pop in there. So we'll change into that and then we'll go ahead and make and then we'll we'll flip back to the previous directory. And that's our process. And we don't need to enter it every time. We can just have it in this shell. We can actually copy that between projects as well. So I'm just going to write and quit. And you can see that this build has been created. And now, of course, if we were to run this right now, so build.sh it will say that i don't have permission we can check this i'm not sure if i'm so i'm so torn should this be a linux tutorial or a cmake tutorial it's a little bit of both so if i list in long form i see that my build.sh does not have executable privileges there's no x here so what i can do is i can change the modifiers to add execution to that file. And then if I do the same thing again, so list storage in long format, my build.sh has got execute, executable privileges. And now if I just go back and yep, again, in the current folder, run build.sh, all of that has happened in one go. And we can see, pop into the build folder. We've got this hello window program, run that. There we go, excellent. So that's it for today. I hope you had fun. I hope you are feeling confident with CMake and let's have some fun. I mean, Visual Studio, oh, I don't like it. Something off. All right, have a good one, all the best, and I'll see you around. Bye.